Hey guys, it's Will here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, tonight I'm going to be doing a painting tutorial for you. Now, it feels like a fair while since I've done one of these, but I'm um, definitely looking to get back into doing a few more of them. So uh, yeah, hopefully this should be interesting for you all. Um, tonight I'm going to be doing a Space Marine, and the idea here is to do a really easy, basic scheme that's still going to look good. Something that you could repeat over a large number of models um, to do a whole army of these, or if you're somebody who's just getting into the hobby, um, or just isn't a big fan of doing a really complex scheme but still wants something that is going to look nice and the trick I'm going to rely on here as well as my normal techniques of using the Citadel washes which I've always been a big fan of uh, sorry the Citadel shades they call them now but they're ink washes um, is going to be using the fact that metallics and particularly silver metallics when dry brushed don't look dusty like a lot of dry brushes do like um, if you're dry brushing something like um, a Space Marine, not so much with black, but with most colours, you can get quite a dusty finish on it, uh, which doesn't always look great for armour, but for silver, it really doesn't work like that because of the way the metallics um, just, just behave and the way they appear. So uh, yeah, gonna be relying largely on that. Now, the basic scheme here would work quite well for a variety of different chapters, be that Silver Skulls, Knights of the Raven, Iron Snakes, you know, any chapter with a majoritively silver paint scheme. But um, I'm actually going to do this as kind of a, uh, a custom make up my own sort of chapter uh, that you could really use for, uh, you know, with a variety of different chapter special rules. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, dive right in and get this started. So you can see the Space Marine here. It's one of the uh, easy to build um, inceptors, uh, intercessors. So he's a Primaris Marine, nice chunky model to work with. And I've built him up, but I've left the bolter off because uh, that's going to make it much easier to paint the chest eagle. Something I do certainly with all bolter armed Marines and a lot of models carrying rifles across their chest, be that Orc Shooter Boys or um, Eldar Dire Avengers, you know, anything like that and um, spray painted him in just GW Corax Black Spray. No, not Corax Black, Abaddon Black. Is it Abaddon Black, Chaos Black? The uh, the basic black spray paint. You can see there's a little bit of the blue plastic showing through there. That's fine because the first colour we're going to apply, Lead Belcher, is one of the base paints. So this has really good coverage, almost without an undercoat, but certainly without the undercoat being perfectly applied. So just going to uh, get a bit of this on my brush. And as a base paint, this is a little bit thicker than some of the others. Gives really nice coverage, but you do just have to add a little bit of water when you mix it. Um, not too much with lead belcher, but um, you just want to make sure it's not too thick. And then just using a pretty standard brush here, just applying that over pretty much the entire miniature. Uh, trying to get a nice even coat. Um, it's kind of fiddly to do on camera, but yeah getting in all the nooks and crannies because this is going to be the uh, the majoritively colour so we're doing this on all the armour, all the cables really doesn't matter if you get it onto bits that you don't eventually want to be this colour because you um, can just go back and neaten up with other colours later so I'm going to get that done and then show you the next step okay so that's all done our Space Marine is now nice and shiny and silver um, I did have to go for a second coat in the end. Always better to apply two thin coats, especially when you're working with these uh, slightly thicker base paints, um, as opposed to one thick coat that might lose you some of the detail. Now, before we do the next stage, it's really important that you let him dry completely, because uh, if it's still a bit damp, this will completely mess it up, because we are going for a shade, Citadel Nulm Oil, um, and we're going to do this as an all-over shade. So painting this over the entire model, again looking to get into all of those details. You can already see as this is going on, it's starting to uh, pick out a lot of the recess detail, give him some more uh, more of a three-dimensional look. So yeah, I'm going to do this over the whole model and over all his weapon as well. Um, and I'll come back once that is dry, because you do want to give this a good amount of time to dry. Depends a lot on the temperature and the humidity, how long it'll take, but must be completely dry before you start working on the next step. So once that's all dry, um, the next colour to use is going to be Stormhost Silver. I'm going to do a dry brush with this. So uh, with a dry brush, you just want to uh, get the paint on your brush, but then remove as much of it as possible on a piece of tissue paper. So you can see I've 
wipe this brush really heavily it's almost not making a mark now but when you start to brush it over the model you see that it's starting to pick out the raised areas and highlight the model um, and while you know to get this really good it takes a lot of practice the basic technique is really straightforward um, and you can see it's already starting to uh, make this guy look a bit more three-dimensional and we've really done nothing complex up to this stage so we'll do this over the whole model and if you're unsure how much do you do you know start off with the absolute bare minimum and build it up you know this doesn't need to be a huge amount of color but um, you know it's, it's easy to add more and get a bit more paint on your brush go a little bit heavier with your brushing it's much harder to remove it and go back over it so uh, We'll get this done um, nice and early on because then you can uh, build up the other colours. Um, dry brushing can be a bit messy so if you uh, left it to last you could ruin some of the other work. As you can see this is almost done now and he's uh, yeah got a much more three-dimensional silver look to him. With the dry brush done you can already really see this guy is starting to take shape um, and look pretty cool. But now we want to pick out some of the details. So we've got four colours here that we're going to want to use for some of the more detailed areas on the model. So to start with, we've got XV88, and that is for this uh, pouch at the back here, or any other like weapon holsters, things like that. Then we've got Abaddon Black, and that is going to be mainly on the gun casing for his bolt rifle. Corn Red for the wax seal on the um, purity seal there. And then a shabti bone for the actual um, fabric of the purity seal itself. So yeah, I'm going to apply all of those just uh, carefully and neatly. So starting off around the back um, with this uh, weapons pouch here. Just uh, making sure that we give this a nice um, even coat of this. Most of these, because they're base paints, they should cover in one coat but if you do need to go back and do a second coat particularly on the um, Ashabti bone which isn't a base paint then that's fine too. So I'm going to do those off camera for the most part I think. The weapon casing is probably the fiddliest part because you are trying to work around parts you've already done in the silver and uh, with the dry brushing obviously you don't want to mess it up because it can be a bit of a pain to go back and do it. So uh, you just want to make sure you've got a good point on your brush and take your time over this bit. It will be uh, worth it in the end. And the uh, shabti bone on the shoulder pad, as you can probably see here, isn't giving me perfect coverage. So uh, definitely need to go back and do a second coat on that. When I say the shoulder pad, I don't actually mean the shoulder pad. I, of course, mean the, uh, the purity seal itself that in this case is attached to the shoulder pad. And then finally we just do the corn red on the, uh, the tip of the purity seal here. Once all those base colours have been applied and have dried, we're going to help to uh, give them a bit more of a three-dimensional look, bring them to life a little bit. Again, trying to use as simple techniques as we can because we want this marine to be one that can be done quite easily. So first thing we're going to do is an ink wash of Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to apply this uh, most prominently to the... Uh, the little leather pouch at the back here so you can already see that's starting to uh, pull in the recesses and give it some shade and highlight quite easily you may want to do two coats on that to get it looking a bit darker but you can already see that's uh, helping there and just going to put a little bit of that in the middle of the purity seal that's too much if you get too much just wipe the excess off on your of your brush put your brush back in and just pull it out so it's just a little bit darker in the recess in the middle of the purity seal there. Then we're going to give it another shade, this time with Seraphim Sepia. And that at this stage is just going to be onto the purity seal here. Um, again, you don't want to go too heavy with this one, I think. You want to um, just let it pull in the recesses while keeping the higher areas in this lighter colour. Then I'm just going to highlight the rim of the purity seal. So we've got um, Evil Sun Scarlet and a smaller brush for this. So we are literally just bringing that around the edge of the purity seal um, to give that like a, a raised effect there. Uh, just very quick and basic. Then we're going to highlight the bolt rifle. So that's all black at the moment, but we're going to use Dawnstone to highlight it. 
Now often with highlighting um, very straight details like this, edge highlighting can be quite nice, but I've chosen black because black tends to get on better with dry brushing. So I am just going to dry brush that onto the raised surfaces of the model. Um, black, oh, this sort of light gray over black tends to give a, um, an all right finish actually. It doesn't look too dusty in the way that dry brushing can sometimes do. Um, and the other thing is it doesn't matter too much about getting it on the metallic because it's so similar in color, it doesn't really show. So you can see there, we've got the details of the bolt gun or the bolt rifle picked out without having to uh, really do anything too complicated there. Next up, I want to add some cool details to the model. Now this is an optional step, you don't have to do this, but I think it's gonna make the model just look a little bit better. Um, because it's so shiny and metallic, you can actually use ink washes to change the color of the metal um, and get different effects. So I'm using Seraphim Sepia first here, and that's gonna to be to make the chest eagle gold. So what we do is paste, paste this Seraphim Sepia over the chest eagle and that will start to give it more of a gold appearance. As you can see, it's not going to be like a bright, shiny, shiny gold, but it's going to be more of a, uh, a dull, metallic gold, um, not even, like almost like a bronzy gold. It's going to help to uh, set him apart a little bit, you know, make that important part of the model stand out. Then I'm going to do a similar sort of thing with Nulm Oil. So again, um, applying this to very specific points. And this is going to be all these like connection points in the armour here where you can, uh, you've got this like cabling stuff in between the main plates of the armour. Um, there's a few of them around the back as well. And this is just to show that, that this isn't like the shiny decorative armour. This is more the, uh, the mechanical worky parts of the model. Quite a few of these actually on a Primaris Marine. Um, got the uh, backpack vents, pop a little bit into each one of those. And the nice thing is if it goes slightly over, it doesn't really matter because it's going to, um, you know, blend in a little bit with the surrounding colour. Can do the grenade as well, make that obviously not part of the armour. And you may have to do two coats with some of these ones to get them looking, looking really good. But you can see now it's made a a bit of a, a variation between the shiny, shiny armour and the more darker metallic working parts. And now we come to do what is probably the only fiddly or difficult bit on this model, and that is the eyes. So normally when I do Space Marine eyes, I use a three layered highlight process and I do it before doing the helmet. So the highlighting of the helmet covers up any mistakes. Obviously with using a dry brush as the highlight, we're not going to be able to do that, but I'm going to try and keep it simple and just use a single colour Evil Sun Scarlet. So I'm going to zoom right in and with the smallest brush I own, which is a small artificial layer brush or an extra small artificial layer brush, I'm just going to um, try and do this on camera. Just painting in that recessed part of the eye there. My advice for this would be take your time, turn the model as necessary and you can always add more but it's hard to take paint away, so uh, yeah, like that. See, I've gone over a little bit there. I'm going to have to go and neaten that up. This would be easier if I wasn't doing this on camera. But yeah, there we go. If we put him down now and zoom back out, that looks quite good. The eyes um, look quite striking without being overpowering. Although what I think I will do on this guy is just run a little bit of silver around the edges to neaten them up a bit. So yeah, I've neatened up around the eyes and uh, glued the bolter on. And as you can see, this guy's looking pretty good now. Um, for a space marine who really didn't take that long at all, and apart from the eyes, used no difficult techniques. So you could call him done here, just paint up his base, and there you go. But um, obviously one of the things space marines are known for is the huge variety of chapters they come, they come in, um, and how every chapter has its own heraldry. So I wanted to do something with this to... Uh, add a bit of uh, personality to it, maybe a bit of like chapter heraldry as a colour. So um, I'm going to just paint a few of the armour panels in in a, um, a brighter colour, non-metallic, to uh, you know act as the chapter heraldry. I'm going to use McCrag Blue for this, but there's a whole variety of other colours. I mean, you could just about use any colour that worked, whether you wanted to go for something like a turquoise with Sotek Green, 
Evil Sun Scarlet or Mephisto and Red or um, certain chapters particularly known for uh, the black. I think there's a, um, an Imperial Fist successor that is basically this with black shoulder pads. So you could go for Abaddon Black. And in this case, I'm just going to apply that mainly to the uh, shoulder pads. So I've got a bit of this on my brush. It's a base coat, so it'll go down quite nicely. And I'm literally just going to paint the inner rim or the, the inside of the shoulder pad, leaving the rim um, metallic because we don't want to actually have to highlight it. Because this is a curved surface with no edges, you don't actually, in this basic scheme, need to worry about doing any kind of highlighting. You can see it's not giving me quite perfect coverage there. That's okay. You can always come back and uh, do a second layer. So yeah, I'm just going to finish this up and then I'm going to base the model because models always look better once they've been based. And I'll show you what he looks like when he's finished. So you can see now I've done the blue on the shoulder pads, which just helps to give them a bit more character and, um, you know, would pull a whole army together because this is the sort of paint scheme that would be good for painting a large army relatively quickly to a good standard rather than, uh, you know, really being a single miniature scheme. Bolters glued in place and I also decided to do the knee pads as well just to uh, give that, um, that blue a bit more of an overall effect. And uh, yeah, as you can see, base is also done. Um, miniatures always look better with a nice base, but this is a fairly simple scheme. Nothing more than washing and dry brushing there. So uh, yeah, actually very pleased with how this guy turned out for how quick he was to do. I mean, you saw how simple the scheme I used was, and yeah, he's done. Be great for batch painting a whole army. I mean, this model's not going to win any Golden Demon awards, but you know, you put um, 50 of these and some support down onto the table, and you've got yourself a nice looking army. So uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. If there is anything else you would like to see me paint that, you know, I reasonably might have lying around to paint, then uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I'll see you all again soon. Bye.